Mars or Venus? What planet would be better for human life to populate one day? Well, the obvious answer might be Mars, but what if I told you Venus is actually a way better option? Yeah, Venus has a potentially better atmosphere and less harsh gravity. But on the other hand, Mars has a better surface and could potentially be terraformed. So let's figure out which planet is really better for humans. Today, we'll walk you through five different categories to determine which planet is the best, Mars or Venus. But first, let's learn a little bit more about them. Astrobiologists have been looking for a way to get humans onto Mars for over 60 years now, but we still haven't set foot on the red planet. According to NASA, it's possible we could see the first human landing on Mars in the 2030s. Now let's take a look at our other closest neighbor, Venus. Venus earned the nickname the Hell Planet because of its scorching hot temperatures, but this planet is more attractive to humans than you might think. It has an Earth-like atmosphere, just 50 kilometers above its surface. Venus also has 90% of the gravity we have here on Earth. Now, Mars only has 38%. Mars is close to us, 280 million kilometers, and we have proof of water on the planet, but too bad it's only half the size of Earth, which may present problems for population growth. Now, Venus is nearly the same size as Earth, though we're slightly larger, and it's about 260 million kilometers away from us, so it would take us less time to get there than Mars. And Venus's thick clouds could help protect us from solar radiation, and we'd have less trouble adjusting to their gravity. Okay, now that we know a little bit more about our planets, let's dive into our categories. Housing. One of the most important things we need to figure out if we want to populate these planets is where we would live. In 2010, NASA held a competition for Martian home designs. This was called the 3D Printed Habitat Challenge, where competitors sent in designs for human habitats on Mars. Now, thanks to this, we've got plenty of ideas on how to sustain life here. Martian atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide, so breathing will be quite the challenge. Because of this, you'll have to rely on oxygen from your spacesuit. Now, because of the lack of gravity, we might get frustrated not being able to stand on our feet. Gravity helps us keep our feet on the ground, and because Mars's gravity is just over one-third of what we have on Earth, well, you'd have to get used to skipping or hopping everywhere. Though it might be fun to go for a float instead of a walk. Now, speaking of floating, stick around to see how floating cities are possible. Now, lugging building materials between Earth and Mars proposes a challenge. Not only would transporting the materials be a hassle, but every time we needed to run to the hardware store for more nails, it'd take us nine months to make the journey back to Earth. Uh, because of this, it would be more effective and less expensive to use materials found on Mars. We can source things like iron, nickel, and sulfur on Mars. During the Habitat Design Challenge, the winning team created a home using natural and biodegradable materials, and the product was built entirely with a 3D printing machine. To make Mars habitable, automated construction would be the way to go. This sort of technology is crucial because there won't be that many people planted on Mars when we start building infrastructure. The construction process would be long and tedious. This is Marsha, the winning creation during this design challenge. Marsha is tall, slim, and made of basalt composite, making it environmentally friendly. Inside, there are four levels with separate spaces for a kitchen, sleeping quarters, and recreational activities. If we didn't end up making these structures, there are some other options we could look into. Some researchers have proposed building homes below the surface of Mars, or maybe igloos, to make it easier for us to create living spaces. But if I'm being honest, living in these conditions would be terrible. It'd be like living in a deep, dark cave here on Earth, except you couldn't breathe the air or go outside. Sure, living on Mars might mean surviving in a dark cave with no fresh air, but let's be real, sometimes navigating your own life feels just as tough. 
Let me tell you a story about my friend Jamie. For months, he was complaining about being stuck at work and not seeing any opportunities. But then recently, he started working with a certified coach through strawberry.me. And it's been one of the best decisions he's ever made. And since Jamie won't stop talking about how good it's been for him, well, we here at What If have partnered with strawberry.me so that you can try it too. First, you create your account, answer a few quizzes about what you need help with, set some goals, and within minutes, strawberry.me will match you with your coach. From there, you can see their bio, read reviews, and even start a chat before you have your first session. Coaching isn't about someone telling you what to do. It's a partnership. Your coach will help you clarify your challenges, create a plan, and then, most importantly, keep you accountable. If you're ready to break old habits, build confidence, and grow personally and professionally, well, this is the way to start. Visit strawberry.me slash what if to take the quiz and get matched with your own coach. You'll never regret investing in yourself. Okay, let's leave Mars's dark caves behind and take a look at the options for homes on Venus. Like we said earlier, this planet is incredibly hot, so instead of living on the surface, our best option is to live 50 kilometers above the surface. Don't get me wrong, it would still be pretty hot up there too. The temperatures would range between 30 degrees to 70 degrees Celsius. But nothing some breezy air conditioning couldn't fix. Our best bet would be to create communities in the stratosphere of the sky, where the temperatures are similar to what we have here on Earth. One of NASA's proposed ideas for living on Venus is called HAVOC, which stands for High Altitude Venus Operational Concept. In this model, humans would live in airships that look similar to blimps. We'd create a floating city. The material would have to be resistant to sulfuric acid, and it would be smart to have a built-in air conditioning system for when temperatures rise above what we're used to. Humans will have to make sure they never touch Venus's surface. The surface would be reserved for observation and research. Homes, roads, and bridges, everything would be built in the sky. The Havoc would be launched onto Venus in a compressed form. Once it falls into the planet, a parachute opens up and releases once the Havoc is fully inflated and can float without any assistance. Materials found on Venus include iron, nickel, titanium, and aluminum. Similar to Mars, we could use some of these materials to create buildings and other infrastructure on the planet. To harvest resources on this scorching hot planet, we'd need to use tools that are temperature resistant. Engineers would need to create machines that would be able to handle the heat of Venus's atmosphere and then transfer these resources to a location where they can cool down. The only issue is this could be a long, drawn-out process, and it might take months until the resources are safe enough to use. When it comes to building homes, Mars for sure takes the win. Growing food. Okay, now that the homes are figured out, humans need something to eat. The very first people on Mars or Venus better get used to the lack of food on the planet. That's not to say there won't be any food, but you can say goodbye to meat and dairy products. You'll obviously have way fewer options than in your local grocery store because there won't be any farms or factories to put together your favorite snacks. Get used to the plant-based lifestyle when you're in space. This would be the most sustainable diet on Venus and Mars. Get used to eating fresh fruits, veggies, seeds, and nuts. We've discovered proof of water on Mars, so we could take advantage of this by using it to help us grow crops. We might even need less water to grow food than we do here on Earth. Because of Mars's 38% gravity rate, Martian soil would hold on to water much longer than what we're used to. But because of the lack of oxygen on Mars and how cold it is, we'd have to replicate other elements needed to make sure Earth-native plants can survive. Plants would most likely be grown in greenhouses. To increase chances of survival, scientists may have to genetically alter them to adapt to the climate on Mars. Some of our food options would be fresh fruits and vegetables that we grow, and non-perishables like pasta or canned beans that we bring from Earth. If you miss eating meat, well, pack some beef jerky. You won't have to worry about it rotting quickly like fresh meat. 
the only issue you'd have is your limited supply because I'm eating that stuff in a week. Venus is a bit of a different story. If we follow our floating cities plan, the hot surface temperature of the planet won't kill our growing plants, but we'd still have to watch out for acid rain. Another issue with Venus is that there's no proof of water on the planet. To grow food there, we need to use the greenhouse method again, but we'd need to create water from scratch. Now, this sounds a lot more intricate than it is, but with the right resources, it is possible. To create water, all you need is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. First, add heat to break apart the atoms, and then they bond together to create water. Now, although we can make water from scratch, so far we haven't found a way to create it in large quantities. Hopefully, by the time humans get to Venus, we'll have figured it out. Humans will be dependent on lab-grown foods, so similar to Mars, Venus would have a lot of leafy greens and foods less likely to perish, but the delivery methods would be different. Because of the similar temperatures on Venus and the knowledge of water creation, growing food on Venus takes the win in this round. Resources. Going back to the material found on these planets, both Mars and Venus are rich in resources, and we can use this to our advantage. Mars is made up of iron, nickel, and sulfur. Now, iron can be used to build vehicles, and conveniently enough, sulfur is used in car batteries. We can also use iron to create buildings and bridges for a more practical life for humans on Mars. Nickel could be used to start a new currency on Mars. Years down the line, when enough people have arrived on this colony, we can use nickel coins as a way to make purchases, building a new economy on another planet. Venus has many of the same elements as Mars, but we'd have to operate differently because of how diverse the two planets are. Whereas it's safe to touch the ground on Mars, we don't have the same option on this burning hot planet. Instead, we need to create air vehicles similar to our floating homes. Aircraft are made of titanium and aluminum, both of which can be found on Venus. Another abundant element on Venus is silicone. Nowadays, humans use this for lip and face injections, but we can use it for so much more. For example, silicone is one of the key ingredients in solar panels. Because of how close Venus is to the sun, we'll have a lot of success using the panels to generate the electricity we need on the planet. Solar panels are amazing because they still produce power during cloudy weather, which we'll be dealing with quite a bit on Venus. Panels will be a lot easier than traditional electric systems. Using them will cut the cost of building power plants and transmission lines. We could run into some dangerous situations with traditional forms of electricity on Venus because of the extreme heat. Power outages on Earth are miserable, but a power outage on Venus could be deadly for humans. Venus wins the resources round. Okay, now that we've got our food, resources, and our homes figured out, which planet is overall a more realistic option? NASA and other space experts have Mars at the top of their priority list. We've had plenty of successful spacecraft landings on Mars since the 1970s. The 2030s are expected to be the decade where humans finally land on Mars after years of exploration and research. Venus has had its fair share of research as well, but because of how hot the ground is on the planet, it's usually ruled out as an option. After all, is there a point to living on a planet if you're just going to live above it? Now, more than ever, we're prepared to land on Mars. It's been studied carefully, and there have been nearly 10 successful missions to the Red Planet. NASA has even created a Mars simulator where Four volunteers will live in isolation for a year. Their psychological and physiological well-being will be constantly monitored throughout the experiment. Venus's floating cities idea hasn't had enough research yet to become more than just a pipe dream. From a logical standpoint, Mars is more realistic than Venus when it comes to habitable spaces for humans. But let's say over the next 100 years, humanity begins to populate both of these planets which would be better in the long run. In the next few million years, space technology will allow us to terraform other planets. By this time, we may have figured out a way to sustain life on Mars. There might be several Martian generations who have never seen the surface of Earth. Humans may adapt to the climate on Mars and have an easier time living in those conditions. 
Martians living on the red planet would adjust to their lack of gravity as if they never knew any different. And Mars will look and feel like Earth at its most sustainable. And because we learned how climate change works here on Earth, we'd take preventative measures to ensure it doesn't happen on Mars. Now, if we terraformed Venus, we could be looking at gorgeous days. We could throw away the 24-hour cycle of Earth. Because on Venus, a solar day lasts more than 100 Earth days. Say goodbye to curfews. Now, Venus may seem like an endless summer vacation, but in 7 billion years, the Sun is scheduled to explode. And since Venus is so close to the Sun, I don't think anyone would survive the catastrophe. But because of how massive the Sun is, Mars will also be affected by the explosion. But because it's a little bit further away than Venus, Mars takes the crown in this competition. Okay, we've talked plenty about Mars and Venus today, but have you ever wondered what it's like to visit the closest planet to the Sun? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If. Hey, big thanks to Strawberry.me for sponsoring this video. Start your personal growth journey at strawberry.me slash what if today.